Good morning. It is wonderful to have you here. Today we are celebrating not just the Lord's Day, but we're also honoring our acolytes who helped me at the altar of God and proclaim God's word this Sunday morning. And so we present them with their new ribbons, their color ribbons, for their new year as they progress as, a, as servers of our God and our church. Please join me in standing and let us celebrate uh, our celebration this morning, number 371 in the blue hymnal, number 371. Please stand. We continue our celebration on page 355 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be the kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. If you are able, please kneel with me or remain standing, whichever is more prayerful for you. Our colic prayer can be found on the top of page two of your bulletin. Almighty God, you have given us your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life through Jesus Christ your son our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever amen please be seated as we hear God's sacred words a reading from the book of Isaiah Chapter 56, 1, 6 through 8. Thus says the Lord, Maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcast of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Psalm 67, we will, receive, we will read the psalm responsibly by half verse. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us your and come to us. Let your ways be known upon the earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 11, 1 to A, 29 through 32. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they, have, they now have been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Please stand with me as we sing our gospel sequence hymn, number 706, number 706 in your blue hymnal. We'll sing the first two verses before the gospel and the third verse after. Yeah. 
In your mercy, Lord, you have called me, taught my Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. This is from chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The gospel of the Lord. To you, Lord Christ. May what I am about to say be in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. It is a, a wonderful day as we celebrate our, these acolytes, these young people, who uh, are, will be rededicating themselves uh, this morning and in the service of God and for our church here at Grace Episcopal. Today, as we listen to our scriptures, God's faith in asking us to follow and to be a faithful person is sometimes contradictory to what we sometimes listen to in our world. Because when we listen to what God is saying today in our gospel, it doesn't look very well for Jesus. It doesn't bear well, period. It's not the Jesus we know and have come to love and ha with his teachings. It is a teaching or a 
part of Jesus, which I think that we see more of his human side, of his maturity, maturing as a man of God, and not so much his divinity. What does that mean? Have you ever heard Jesus ridicule somebody and call them a dog? This is the time in Matthew's gospel, most likely the only other place where Jesus is derogatory to someone. He is using a profane term to this woman who is a Canaanite, who's from the region of Tyre and Sidon. Now, how many of you this morning took stock of where you lived? Are you on the west side of town? Downtown? Midtown? South side? North side? See, what I think is going on is that Jesus is recognizing the fact that that he's from Jerusalem, born in Nazareth, Bethlehem. These are his regions. These are his people. This is how he was raised. It's what he knew. And yet today we hear something that is coming out of Jesus' mouth that is not typical of what he would normally say and what we would normally hear. What we hear is to be faithful, you have to make a loud noise. And this woman who came from Canaanite was lower, well, like a dog. She was being described as, in the Greek word, it actually means little dog or puppy. And the children of Israel are the people who are those who are Hebrew, Israelites. They are the chosen, like Jesus. But what I think what is happening is that we see today in the scriptures, even from Isaiah, we're trying to make a distinction that there should be no boundaries, no barriers that keep us from God's love and our faithfulness. See, to be faithful doesn't mean that just because you have love in your heart for God, And for Jesus, that's enough. You have to put it into action. You have to get out there and be a person of faith. And Jesus, let alone his disciples who are saying to get rid of this lady. She's being loud. We don't need this kind of attention. And what Jesus is finally realizing is that that person who's making all the ruckus And the noise is the person outside of his territory, his circle, so to speak. What are our circles? What are your area? What is your boundaries? And how does your faith talk to us about those boundaries? In other words, who's in and who's out? So many things in our society we, we, we hear that only certain people are being are chosen. And we forget that for our cultures, our biases are typically what we know. And sometimes the gospel challenges us that, that and it challenges our faith in how we practice our faith. You may not be accustomed to having time in silence and meditation in your own home. Maybe during the pandemic, maybe we've gotten out of the habit of coming to church and being around other people and being in community. Maybe you don't like associating with women. or Maybe you don't like to associate with men either. Maybe you don't like to be with those people on the west side of town or the people in downtown. Do you see where I'm getting at? And what Jesus is actually struggling with today 
This woman who is being very persistent has to cry out, help me. Help my daughter. How many of us would not do the same for our own children, for our spouse or for our parents? We cry out daily. At times, even in our pillows, we cry ourselves to sleep because we're not being heard. We're not being seen. And yet, yet some of us are even being called inflammatory language, names, bullied. We do it on social media to each other. Our boundaries are becoming less and less, but some of us are even keeping up more walls and more boundaries because we don't want to be challenged. We don't want our faith challenged. We don't want anything to change. It needs to stay the same. It's what I'm comfortable. Though the boundaries that Jesus encountered with this woman were the same kind of boundaries that many of us probably face on a daily basis. From social change and also from the things that we hear in news and the media, people respect other boundaries or people respect your space and some people don't. Even people going to war over my space as opposed to your space and willing to die for it or kill or to send other people to die for you. The derogatory word that we hear about being called a dog, a woman being called a dog, children being called dogs, may be somewhat bristling, or if you listen to that passage carefully, you might hear yourself being called something derogatory. Remember when? How did it feel? See, our faith is what we put into action. In the Episcopal Church, there's a thing what we call called the via media. It's called, in Latin, it's called the middle way. It's what we try to do to hear each other speaking and seeing each other face to face. Do I hear you? Do I see you as you are? Our Jadeo Christian roots call us children of God, and that's what we are. Do you see the other child in yourself? or in the other? Or do we try to throw ourselves with the power play like the disciples, get rid of her and say, oh, let's, let's tease her, let's tease him about how he looks or why he's not an athlete or why he's too smart or too slow or too fast. We sometimes do that so that we hold the power just like Jesus, for a few moments until he had that awakening and he probably heard his father say to him, is that really how you would want to be treated, my son? How would you like to be treated? In a day and age when we try, people are trying to pit each other against each other, our faith as Christians needs to be one that helps us see each other as we are, as beautiful people, as beautiful teenagers who might be a little tired today after the high school football and soccer games yesterday and this weekend. But we are beautiful just as we are. And see, that's what Jesus comes to find out. He says to the woman, he says to him, and says, your faith is great. Your daughter will be healed. My friends, as we go about our week and our day, think about how we can break down our walls the boundaries that we keep and we hold on to, what is keeping you from 
seeing the other or hearing the other child of God, just like you are. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith with the Nicene Creed on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only... Turning to page four in your bulletin, let us now offer our prayers as people of God. If you are able, please kneel with me or remain standing. Sisters and brothers, there is a wideness in God's mercy like the wideness of the sea. Therefore, let us come before our loving God saying, hear us, we humbly pray. Lord, help us. Loving God, you have shown your church such great mercy. Through the witness of your church, may those beyond our walls also experience the goodness of your mercy. Bless our congregation's 150th anniversary of our church building and all the activities and ministries that we celebrate in your holy name throughout our anniversary year. Hear us, we humbly pray. Lord, help us. Lord of all peoples, you have created us to live together. Help us to see that our common life depends on each other's work and goodwill. Cause the wars to cease and generosity to prevail. We pray for the people of Ukraine and the end of that war. May your reign of peace and justice come quickly. Hear us, we humbly pray. Caring God, how good and pleasant it is when your children live together in unity. We especially pray for all those who help minister at God's altar as we honor our acolytes on this Ribbon Sunday. For all who are celebrating their birthdays this week, Walker Jones, Johnette Men's Cole, John Krause, John Shadle, Molly Dismukes, and for all couples who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries, especially for Charlene and John Baker. Pour out a spirit of love, hope, and forgiveness in our community. As we humbly pray. Lord, help us. Abundant God, you make the earth bring forth good food. As you provided for the children of Israel, we pray you will also provide for those also suffering from famine or need. Hear us, we humbly pray. Lord, help us. Lord Christ, may those who call out, your, call out to you in great faith find your heart open to their cries. 
Let us pray for the victims of the destructive fire on the island of Maui, Hawaii, and the hundreds that have been displaced. For those on our parish and military prayer list found in our bulletin, those prayers are written in the book, prayer, book of prayerful intentions. We ask for healing for the sick and the suffering, the desperate and the disturbed. Hear us, we humbly pray. Lord, help us. God of blessings, bless your people with the life further, <clears throat> forevermore. We especially pray for those who have died on the island of Maui and for those lost in the war of Ukraine. May the dying find comfort. May our dead rest in your peace. Hear us, we humbly pray. Lord, help us. God of all nations, faith in Jesus, a gentle, Gentile woman will found welcome at the table of your children. Lead us and guide us to open our hearts in faith. Hear our prayers this day and throughout this coming week. We ask this through Jesus, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Turning back to our Book of Common Prayer on page 360. Page 360. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and Mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us extend to each other a sign of Christ's peace and joy. And then we'll also have our little ceremony as well. Just a few moments. I'd like to uh, thank uh, the Yeager family for the beautiful flowers that adorn our altar today uh, in memory of the, our late uh, former rector, Father Nick Yeager, and uh, Julie's, uh, actually Julie and Father Nick's little dog, Frankie, who passed away recently. And so that wonderful little four-legged furry friend that we may all have, some of you may have in your own homes, it become like a little family member. So we give thanks for the Jaegers today. Thank you so much. I'd also like to uh, hope you can join us for hospitality right after our service in Fletcher Hall uh, for coffee and donuts and other social activities. Uh, we also uh, like to encourage people to wear your name tags as much as possible so that we can help recognize each other by name uh, in another way of being hospitable to each other. Thank you for so many of you who helped us fill a cram the crib. Uh, we're going to be cramming the crib with other things. We collected over 214 boxes of cereal. Yay. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? 
And so this is part of our 150th anniversary celebration in helping uh, Paducah Cooperative Ministry with many other needs that are uh, un for lots of needy uh, families and children in our community. One of those is that uh, is Habitat for Humanity. And uh, this uh, uh, next Saturday, if you are able or would like to help for an hour or two or just a half hour, uh, Habitat for Humanity is needing volunteers to help paint their house on Guth Guthrie Avenue uh, on, this, on August 26th. Uh, this could be found on, uh, will be put on our Facebook page, I think. Um, I think, right, Hannah? <laughs> I don't know if, if they, Claudia did or not. <laughs> yeah, anyway, this Saturday from 8 a.m. to uh, 1 p.m., uh, paint brushes and paint will be provided. Uh, waivers for those can be found in Fletcher Hall on the table, uh, one of the tables in there, uh, if you'd like to. And even teenagers or uh, young people under the age of 18 can also participate with, the, uh, with one of their parents or a guardian. Uh, again, the waiver is there also that you can fill out, participate with that. Also next Saturday is Empty Bowls, uh, which is a wonderful way. So after you paint a little bit, Go get lunch at Empty Bowls and uh, at the uh, Convention Center here in Paducah. And that's from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And today we are also hosting a community kitchen. And so Sharon and her crew are back in the kitchen uh, probably in just a few minutes. We'll be working on building, making sandwiches uh, for those who are hungry in our community. This afternoon, uh, we have a very special occasion. It's called the Foam Party. And Hannah and Broadway Methodist are teaming up to have this wonderful foam party. So if you're a young person and, or even a tiny person, you can come with your parents. Bring a lawn chair. It's great entertainment. Watch the kids get into the foam. Or you yourself as an adult can get in the foam too. And so there will be a picnic right afterwards. This is from 5 o'clock to 6.30 this evening out here on our West Lawn. And so uh, come and join and have fun. Uh, and if uh, so all ages are uh, provided and if uh, so they're having hot dogs and hamburgers right after that as well I'll be out at Parkview nursing home this Friday at 10 a.m. If you'd like to come and join me with the uh, we have three parishioners that uh, Live out there and are receiving care and so if you'd like to come and join me in celebrating them and, and With them as well. It'd be great to have you join us all right, now at this time, I'd like to draw your attention to the uh, Acolyte Commitment Ceremony in, found in your bulletin. It's the insert. And if I could have our Acolytes please stand, and those who are Acolyting at this time, if you could come down. Thomas, that's you. <laughs> come on down and join your other Acolytes. And if you have a sheet, uh, share that with another because you have some speaking parts in this, okay? Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we are all baptized by one spirit into one body and given gifts of the varieties of ministries for the common good. Our purpose is to commission these persons in the name of God as acolytes for this school year and the coming summer for this congregation. And uh, Hannah and Martha, I think, is somewhere here too. There she is. They're my illustrious leaders uh, with me and helpers. Are these persons you are presenting prepared and to commit themselves to Christ our Lord by regular attendance at worship and to the knowledge of their duties to exercise their ministry and to honor God and the well-being of his church? We believe they are. Acolytes. You have been called to a ministry in this congregation. Will you, as long as you are engaged in this work, perform it with diligence? Will you faithfully and reverently execute the duties of your ministry to honor God and the benefit of the members of this congregation? Leaders, go ahead.
Do not be negligent, for the Lord has chosen you to stand in his presence, to minister for him, and to be his minister. I will go to the altar of God. Congregation. O God, let us pray. O God, O gracious Father, bless the acolytes of your church that they may so serve before your earthly altar in reverence and holiness, that they may attain with all your saints and angels the joy of your serving you and worshiping you before your heavenly altar. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of God and of this congregation, I commission you as acolytes of Grace Episcopal Church. We will now present to you the ribbons of your office. At this time, I will call your name, uh, and as you are, your name is called, come forward. I'll place your new ribbon on over you, and then I'll have you uh, come and sign the book uh, to, if Hannah is holding over here to the side. Nolan Black. Eden Adams. Eden is the one only of her, of her class that is here with us today. Her brother, Corbin, could not be with us. And also Kate Johnson, unfortunately, could not be with us today. Congratulations. Thomas Dorsey. Congratulations, Thomas. Amos Holland. Congratulations, Amos. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Olive Heidig could not be with us because of illness. And we thank her for her service. As these three enter their third year with their blue ribbons. Eden received her red ribbon for her second year, and Nolan is uh, starting with his first year with a black ribbon. Now we uh, move to those who are celebrating their fifth year, Emmett Moorhead. And I found out this morning that Emmett, this is his favorite color, purple. It's mine too. <laughs> Congratulations. If you'd sign the book. <laughs> Elise Moorhead. Congratulations, Elise. Congratulations. Once you receive your ribbons, you can be seated. Sorry. Uh, for the go their sixth year, uh, they, Dawson Black and Griffin Holland are receiving their gold ribbons. Dawson could not be here this morning. Congratulations, Griffin. Thank you. And now we are the illustrious nine-year nine year veterans, and I'm deeply appreciative for these uh, young people. Uh, William Dorsey. They are receiving a blue ribbon with silver insert. Congratulations. Thank you. Jane Taylor. Congratulations. 
patience. Thank you. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Liam Black. Congratulations, Liam. Be careful of this. It's got pins in it. I'll have it stitched up later. I'd like to especially thank uh, these three because Jane and Liam are both seniors this year, and William is a junior in high school. And I cannot thank them enough because when they get to this point in their lives, sometimes, and even in high school, our youth tend to not want to be in church. And so I am just so greatly appreciative for their love of God and for this community of Grace Episcopal and for all of these acolytes and their parents, their parents who are really important in getting them here to church. And I can't thank them so enough, enough. And so like, I would like you to, acolytes to please stand and come forward and let us stand up on the steps, if you would, please. Come on, Eden. Right down here. There you go. Would you please... Join me in thanking these acolytes for another year of service. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, guys, you can be seated. Thank you, thank you. Congratulations on your new ribbons and for your entire service. And again, thank you, parents, for helping us mold and help pass on our faith to these young people. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up as a sacrifice unto God.
praise God. We continue our celebration on page 361 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 361. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. And gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you and the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of the new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament serving to and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at that last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. 
All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The gifts of God for you, the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Wherever you are in your faith journey, all baptized Christians are welcome at this communion rail and at this altar. Please know that you, uh, wherever you are in your, your faith journey, you are welcome. If you need a gluten-free wafer that has also been blessed, please let me know uh, as you come forward to, to the communion rail. If you would prefer to drink from the common cup, uh, of, of the blessed wine or the intinction to cups the Eucharistic ministers will be available to each and every one of you please let them know what, what you would prefer by either holding your wafer to be intinct to dipped into the little small chalices or to drink by consuming your bread wafer all are welcome Liam Gate. Amos, can you give me a can you give me a one of those towels?
Let us offer our prayer after communion, found on page 366 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to share with you a prayer, or a, a prayer and reflection on for Habitat for Humanity that Jerry Goodfriend wrote for our congregation. Creator of woods and waters, mountains and deserts, all that is get, gives shelter, we pray for blessings on our homes. Give us the refuge we need for all our lives' storms. Give us strength for building, joy in everyday living. Bless the coffee mugs and spoons, cardinals outside our windows, lullaby breezes that sing us to sleep in your arms. Please join us for hospitality in Fletcher Hall right after our service. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us go forth and be the church. Alleluia, alleluia.